します。Good morning from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. I have the honor today of having Yuwa Hernandez Niemi presenting on China、uh, Neurosurgery Grand Rounds, and we'll start right away. Welcome, Yuwa. It's all yours. Okay, dear John, dear colleagues, this、uh, hot day in Chengzhou, maybe the same temperature than in Miami. Yeah, the hot period is beginning here. <laughs> In China, so I will speak first about the、uh, uh, in the series of、uh, different neurosurgical lectures. I will we will give every Friday. This is the first time we give from this series, and I, I thought I will begin with the pineal region lesions, pineal surgery. That is certainly overlapping, but neurosurgery has many overlapping. So I will tell about my own personal experience. That I was have been assisted Professor Heiskanen, late Professor Heiskanen, in one case which failed the approach, but then I read better in clinical neurosurgery, and then we could tell the background and tell the background. Oh, oh, oh okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm I'm not stuck. So、I was、okay. telling that、uh, 1980, 40 years ago, I made my first case in Kuopio, and after that, since 1997, 2015 in Helsinki, and then some cases around the world. Now I am in China since two years. So what I'm doing here in China? So I'm working here as a professor and chairman in Yuha Ernestin International Center. There are some slides about the agreement here. And then case discussions, ward rounds, operation room, and then we have made life courses here. Of course, now life courses, the fate of life courses is not known. What happens now? We are locked down and we cannot travel. So we give webinars. So this is my personal experience. More than sixteen thousand operations during my career and.、Uh, Between one and two percent are pineal tumors. So, out of them, more than one hundred pineal tumors and pineal cyst, very large series, more than seventy patients, and then some vascular cases. So, I saw how Dr. Drake and Pierles. Always use this plus at the end of the numbers, figures, because they didn't know the exact exact number of the cases. So, but it is more than 200 cases I have done. Exact numbers are in the PhD book of Johan Shoku Veloske, who is making his PhD finalizing now in Helsinki. But this is the Helsinki series. So, this is the pineal region anatomy. It is in the middle of the head. Wherever you go to this area, and circle with red, so it is long distance. This means that if you want to do the operation, you have to have、uh, long instruments to come there because there is no、uh, shorter distance. And I have been using this、uh, approach, which I saw in the next. I go above cerebellum. Below tentorum, this is called suboccipital, infratentorial, supracerebellar approach. This、uh, specimen is from Professor Emil Afsi, Mersin, Turkey, from Wisconsin Laboratory. You see that there is a root outside of the brain here, about the cerebellum. And tentorum has been taken here away, but you can see that there is a root to pineal region, and because cerebellum is there, so it is useful to use sitting position because the gravity is taking the cerebellum down. So this is from 1979 from clinical neurosurgery book. By Professor Ben Stein, a schematic a picture how to go to pineal region, 
And here we have the sitting position. This is from Helsinki. I will tell about the details and in the videos, we hopefully can see. So this is how the patient is before draping. We keep the head rather well flexed, but you should not flex too much because then you might get the cervical medullary injury, tetraparesis, which happened to me in 1983 in a occipital AVM in a young patient I was operating on. In sitting position, I flexed too much and it was patient recovered, but it was a terrible situation with tetraparesis after operation. Good surgery for the AVM, but uh, from the position, difficult, a difficult complication. Of course, if you want to do sitting position, then all the anesthetists and neurosurgeons are saying that you, you will get air emboli. These things have been solved by experience and good anesthesia. So we didn't have in this series no, no serious pulmonary embolism, sitting position has been widely used in Helsinki and we could do it also here in uh, Nepal and also in here in Shenzhou. So this is how to have the head position. This is malignant glioma in the pineal region. This cannot be radically resected, but you see that the, here is the root above cerebellum and then you come to the pineal region and the cerebellum is going down. And in this picture, the head is flexed and turned down. So you should have the tentorium at the horizontal position. So you can work very well. You are not looking upwards because in the many congresses, neurosurgeons are complaining. They have to uh, hold the hands, the arms, high, they get tired, but the clever trick is to turn the head forward, so you have the tentorium uh, horizontal, and then you can lean your hands on the back of the patient. So this is uh, from uh, Dr. Yone Kawa, late Professor Yone Kawa from Zurich, from his publication that is extremely wide opening, we are not doing that anymore. But this is like it was classical, classical approach, bilateral approach. And one of the drawbacks of this uh, bilateral opening is you have you are going in the midline, and there are draining veins in the midline. So you have to cut them. And uh, what happened? You have to cut those veins. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Loud and clear. Okay, okay. That was an announcement that there is something wrong, but it's working again. So you have to cut the veins in the midline. And in my early surgical experience, one case had a edema and small venous infarction in the upper part of the cerebellum. So we switched later to the paramedian approach. One of the advantages of the uh, advances of the this uh, approach supracerebellar. So you go below these difficult veins here. So you go below them. This is a precentral vein of the cerebellum, you can switch it to the side. Sometimes you can cut it, but uh, it is better to preserve it. But you can switch, the turn, manipulate it to the side when you go to the tumor. So working below the big veins is the advantage of supracerebellar approach. You can go also between occipital lobes but then you come from a bow, you have to open the dentorium and then you may touch the veins. So these are the most important tricks in doing infratentorial supracerebellar route. 
positioning, sitting position is actually I have always been using in one uh, very sick old patient I tried to, to do prone position but uh, I failed and then we late in, in a later day we put the patient sitting and we were successful in surgery. So you should flex the head forwards so that the tentorium is horizontal and you can turn the operation table so that you see horizontal below the tentorium. Then you have very good working position. You can lean your arms on the back of the patient and don't turn the head too much. You should have your fingers between the chin below the, you, you should be able to put your uh, hand below the mandible. And then we have been doing one burrow hole and then doing a small flap, partially supratentorial, but maybe part infratentorial. And then we do it side cutting granitum, the bone flap, and and embolism was mentioned how to do with that to monitor PCO2. This is very important. When PCO2 drops down, then anesthetist is compressing the jugular veins and you will see the blood coming and you can seal the rent. The surgeon, neurosurgeon can seal the rent. So this is very important. All the time observe PCO2. This, this is the Blue. So in many places you put a catheter in the right heart. We didn't find it very useful because you don't get any air if you suck it there. So we stopped to use it. So this is from Sengso. This is not, uh, yeah, this is uh, reaching the final region, but that is not actually Final tumor. I, this is not in the series, but just to demonstrate how we uh, manage to do the sitting position here. We uh, have no T suite here, so, but so the legs are wrapped here, and the patient head is uh, fixed with Mayfield, and otherwise we go as earlier mentioned and this is another case this is also not pineal tumor it is a, a cavernoma mainly in the fourth ventricle but also may, uh, beginning from the brain stem so i was operated on in sitting position and you see how much the head is turned we call it actually a praying position because you are humble you humble turning your head down so this means that the tentorium is is horizontal there's very good good uh, ergonomic position here so let's go forward this is the position and position is extremely important here so this is the thing this is the thing positioning then you have a very easy approach in helsinki life courses i made always first case was spinal assist because the team was very well prepared to do the sitting position and the cystic tumor or cyst is easy to take out so we had very good beginning for the life course so i saw some examples this is old case you see this spinal meningioma and you see the flap flap here this on both sides, the flat. So this is in the earlier series. We switch to unilateral paramedian approach in the later series, not to cut the draining veins from the upper part to the cerebellum and uh, just bypass them to the pineal region. So this is early, early case and here we have a pineal cyst. You see a cyst I mentioned. We have done around 70 in Joham 
shockers, PAC there are 60 cases, well analyzed and with very long follow-up. So this is pineal cyst. And this is the position for the pineal cyst. We will switch to videos later. This is after operation. You see also now here the opening is, is uh, <coughs> paramedia, not in the midline, not to disturb the veins. And here again, a pineal cyst. After operation, again, paramedian, small flap. I don't turn the head, I put the head straight and turn myself and the microscope to go to the pineal region. So this is a professor, late Professor Jonek Kavas. <clears throat> from the publication of late Professor Yone Kava. This drawing is made by Peter Roth in Zurich. So this is the best approach that as mentioned, we are doing by far smaller, smaller approach now. So I hope now we can get the videos running. So first about the series, so <clears throat> This is more than 200 cases. So one patient died at the sixth day. It was a young boy who came unconscious here and we took as emergency the tumor out, but uh, he was uh, very deeply unconscious and died. So actually, the father took the patient home. Like here is the habit. And then the patients who had one, respectively, two months after surgery, uh, debilitating in other causes. So in the earlier series published from Kuopio and Helsinki, around 120 patients, so one-fifth of the patient had some complications in the post-operative period. And here are those complications listed. In this uh, more than 100 cases, there was one epidural hematoma, nine transient parinos syndrome, they all cleared, two meningitis, three wound infections in the midline approaches, and then transient memory disturbances, mild hemiparesis, and uh, one CSU fistula. They are not common CS fistulas and then some slight cranial nerve. Hope now we can. Countries out one videos you Google my name and 1001, you will find around 1600 videos free to see. In China, it's not possible, but you can connect my secretary, Tungsan Chen, in this email address. So we can give copies here to be spread out. So about the pioneer lesions, I take until the end of this PowerPoint presentation because we have to switch the videos. It seems to be a little bit complicated. There are all kinds of tumors at the pineal region. It is deep, as I mentioned. It is in the middle of the brain, you have to have long instruments, but uh, this approach, infratentoria supracellipera, if you have a good team to make the positioning, is extremely good to take these tumors out. And mortality and morbidity is very low as compared in 60s, 50s, 
more than half, even 70% of the patients died. That's why it was switched to biopsies in these cases. But now it is around <clears throat> with more than 1% mortality. So this is the final slide. And now we try to get the videos here. Can we go to the videos? Okay, let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to take you off the screen, okay, Yuha? Um, yep. Yeah, and then you can start anew, okay? Okay, now you just open the video and share it. Okay. Let's try. Let's try. We're learning on the fly. Is there in the action video the one thousand one videos the helicopter? Yeah, the the, the, the the connection is kind of being stretched. Can you hear? Can you hear me, Yuha? It's frozen right now. So just be patient. Okay, they'll be back. It's time for coffee break, Dr. Kabulo. Yes, Dr. Bennett. How are you doing yes, today? Coffee break. <laughs> time for coffee break, and let's introduce some people here, Dr. Kian. Yes. I don't know if Musindo, I don't know if you're there, Musindo. Oh, okay, you heard back. Okay. Unmute them. You're, you're, you're muted. You're muted and frozen. I have a little technical issues here. Okay, he fell off again. Okay, we're waiting for uh, you all to get back. Welcome, everybody. Usually it works out. Hello, Michael Segru. How you doing? Good. Good. Good to see you here. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, uh, I, I, I'm. At, you're at the end of a, a long day of meetings. I've been on video calls literally since eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, uh, you has got the Wi-Fi. I guess in the hospital there is a little stretched. But, yeah, uh, I think Zoom is uh, Zoom's getting it's uh, a lot more work than they bargained for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too optimistic about the videos because video really stretches it. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to get things going, uh, you, you, you talked about putting some webinars on. Yeah, we put on our first one yesterday to 65 people through the subcortical surgery group, but uh, we can pretty much do it whenever we want now. Uh, we're, we're, we're pros at it. Oh, uh, good, good. So well, then, we can do it every week if people want. Um, that, that would be great. What we figured out is that we figured out how to get it to where uh, we can proctor like, you know, 50 people using the software at once. Um, okay, excuse me, Michael, new host back, okay? We'll talk yeah. later, okay? Sure. Okay, you are you back? Yeah, we just have to change the rule. Well, oh, you have to change the rule. Okay, well, yeah, on the fly. Connection was weak. Okay, it looks better here. Looks better here. Yeah. 
Can we take the videos now? Doctor? Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. All you do is open right. the video and share it. No, 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 no. Mm. Uh, may I take this one out? I go back. No, no. Yeah, some of the panelists are saying it's the corona of the internet. No. Are you opening the video? Just open it like you were. I have them ready. So if, if it's running now. Yeah, and then share it. You get them, get it running. And yeah. then you, so come, video, you come, then you come to the Zoom. Yeah. Uh, open the post. Okay. Sorry, folks. You host technician is not here. <laughs> Are you opening the video okay? I am. Okay, now you just share it. From the beginning. Okay, you're sharing. Okay. No. Okay, that's good. That's good. Now open the video. There you go. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it's going. Now you just open the video. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, hope with this connection, uh, I'm not too optimistic. Okay, there you go. Okay, there okay. you go. Yes. This is the first case. This is edited by Daniel Kosirov. This is a young patient, 13 years old, female, has a big pineal cyst. I mentioned I've done more than 70 of them. And this is the MRI of the patient. And now we go. This is the sitting position, paramedian approach. And then after opening the skull, we go below the transverse sinus. Transverse sinus is here and we go above the cerebellum, crawling over the cerebellum towards pineal region. It is a deep, small cap, so sometimes you don't see it well because your hand is now shadowing. But now we are coming there. And uh, how the pineal cyst looks, it is dirty gray yellow. And now I go between veins here and open the cyst here, manipulate it from the surroundings. And the trick in these cystic tumors or cysts is that you make a hole in the back wall and go inside. Now I'm going inside the cyst. And then you take the anterior wall here with forceps and just like skinning the fish, you slowly, carefully draw it out. So it is good operation, a traumatic, and you get the other cyst or two more out. So it's coming out now as one piece, two pieces. And then, yeah, there is some remnant now. And then, perforating, making hemostasis. 
And now we are inside the third ventricle. You, you can see the third ventricle. I have done also two colloids just by this route because there was another reason in the brainstem. Professor Konovalos in Burdenko has done also several cases. So checking here the lesion. Here you could use the endoscope to check the hemostasis. I tried once, but I didn't like like to use the endoscope. But certainly, it is if you can use well the endoscope it is of good use. And this is how it then you put here for hemostasis and careful hemostasis is important. Clear fluid. And these are postoperative pictures, MRI, 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 the patient made good recovery as they usually do in the final cyst. So this is team made the videos and then we take the next, next video. I close this video now. And then we take, uh, here is a pineal region meningioma. I showed the CT, this is uh, more, recent case because we did <clears throat> edited by Dr. Carreno from Italy. This is pineal region meningioma. Older patients like the meningioma patients are. Here is preoperative, medium-sized tumor or for this region maybe big. But when you have seen tumors in China or India, so you have to be say that this is medium sized. So this is the paramedian incision. Please note, we are not shaving the hair. In China, you are shaving the hair. This is a shave. So you should not take the hair out. Just area where you are making the incision. And here we are opening the dura against the transverse sinus. Good stitches to hold the dura away so that you can see below the tentorium and go above cerebellum to the tumor. Which vessels, vessels are here important? You have bilateral posterior choroidal arteries. You should save them. In two cases, I had some complications with these arteries and there, there was some thalamic infarct infarction and as I showed these patients died later, one or two months later after surgery. So now this is the meningioma slowly coming. You should save all small arteries on the surface. And this is coming now piecemeal. This is a big tumor. You cannot take it totally out. So you debulk the tumor then go on both sides. <coughs> both sides, I use also water dissection. Here I open the tentorium. Because the tumor was rather big. So I open the tentorium to see some parts, meningioma there, making a hole in tentorium and then Populating tentorium and then cutting. And here you see a small trick coming. So the tentorium is held by a clip in the place when you have to make the incision there. Going around the tumor carefully. It's a benign tumor, of course, many tumors, so you should be able to take it totally out. And here we see the cleavage plane when we have the bullet, the tumor take, taken the inner part of the tumor out. So we can compress the tumor and uh, then have a good grip with the tumor forceps, pulling carefully and taking small pieces. This tumor forcep is very good in, in taking this tumors out, but it must be a long instrument. So this is, must be a long instrument. So sometimes you're asking, asking for long, special long instruments in this area. Here you see the clip holding the tentorium. 
cut the thorium in place. One more is coming. And here, yeah. bigger part of the tumor. It's like bird, the tumor is coming there. You draw and pull it slightly and have a good grip and then you can take it out. But you should always think when you draw or pull the tumor out that there is on the other side, there is a there is a vessel, artery or vein. So you should be careful not to take the tumor abruptly out. Just coagulate these vessels and then you can after cutting you can take this piece out. So we are coming to the final stage. He's now making hemostasis here. And the hemostasis should be very careful, careful, because if there is a bleeding in this area, you get the hydrocephalus. And here you see the frontal air also. This is coming from the sitting position. This is usual, seldom any tension uh, And I will show one more case. This is here. I selected three cases. Yeah. It's the last case I will show, and then we might discuss and have some comments on this. It's a 31 years old male, rather small looking pineal tumor, but it had an enhancement, and so we suspect it might be a Huntington tumor or benign tumor. There are many different varieties of tumor. There is the from the skin, skin incision again. And then after craniotomy, we open the dura and turn it upwards against the transverse sinus here going about cerebellum. This is what I call a farid vein, small pitching vein. I try to save extremely long. But at the end of the operation, in front of the visiting Iranese colleague, it was destroyed. I had to coagulate it. So it is better to take them in the beginning if they are on the way. They are, of the paramedian veins, you don't have any complications. But the, from the midline veins, you have venous disturbances. And now we go deeper, below the veins, dissect, and we should soon see. The tumor. Now we see the tumor surface here. This is a benign tumor. And we take a specimen in the beginning for the pathology, for frozen specimen. going around the tumor, so you can have a good cleavage plane and take the small arteries feeding the tumor and take the coagulate the veins also. And this way you free the tumor from the surroundings and uh, to be radical, you have to see the third ventricle after removal of the tumor. So this is very important. The, there's one dead angle, and this is below the tumor. And here, quite frankly, endoscope might be good, but uh, as mentioned, I didn't didn't use in this series. I tried only once, and I didn't like them. Now, maybe nowadays, the endoscopes are better. So the tumor is coming out, some bleeding, not very vascular tumor, but uh, 
has some vessels coagulating with bipolar time and manipulating of the type tumor. Vessels cutting them long micro scissors you have to have. And now making at the same time. How much does this here? Now the main part of the tumor is coming and now we see the third ventricle. This is a hemostat here. If you have a good look in the third ventricle, making hemostasis here. And hemostasis must be good. Otherwise, patient has bleeding inside the third ventricle as hydrocephalus. It's difficult to treat. This is the final stage. This is after operation. There's some blood and hemostat for the place, but the tumor removal was radical. So this were my presentation. The three videos shown amateur way, but next time we will do better. So now we know how to do. So okay, good. You're great. Question. Okay, let me just get you off the screen there. You uh, um, okay? I'm, I'll I'll get you off there. I'll bump you off. I close this video. No, I, yeah, I, I yeah, I'll get you off there. Okay, we'll open it up for comments or questions from the panel. I see the questions in the chat box, but let's see if we have any questions that you can see you and meet you. Uh, any comments, questions? Step forward. This is yeah, new tech you are. Part of it is uh, learning how to interact. <laughs> Hi, uh, I would like I, I would like to have two questions if it's possible. Yes, uh, could you please introduce yourself, Julia? Yes, yes, Johanna, actually. Johanna. Yes. First of all, huge thank you, uh, Professor Hernesniemi, for this amazing presentation again. Absolutely wow, really amazing. So first of all, I'm from Helsinki, Finland, and I would like to have two questions from Professor. First of all. Uh, MRI, it's not always so reliable when you try to make the difference between the benign and the malignant lesion. How do you make it? Do you use some parameters or do you take biopsies? And then another question, in case this obstructive hydrocephalus do occur, uh, do you prefer to do both at the same time, like the tumor resection and opening of the posterior third ventricle, or do you do endoscopic third ventricle astronomy first? Thank you. In this, <laughs> this series, the uh, biopsies were made by other neurosurgeons. I, I always ma made uh, direct surgery because we were experienced team, so for us it was not a big deal. We put the patient in sitting position and go to the tumor. And, uh, if it is malignant, then of course make only partial resection or biopsy. This one you can see in MRI, like in the case I showed a malignant uh, glioma growing in the pineal region. This one you can see, but then you have many tumors you suspect. You don't know if they are malignant or benign. Many of them are benign tumors and you can make radical, radical removal of them. To, to have post-operative hydrocephalus because <coughs> bleeding is extremely seldom. There's only one case. Mm. Of course, we remember the cases with difficulties. We remember better, but it was not a problem. Some patient had a shunt before operation done by other surgeons. I never made a preoperative shunt because if you take the tumor out, hydrocephalus is resolved and uh, the situation is treated. This was the policy. So direct surgery, result, uh, release of hydrocephalus by tumor removal. Okay, Some, thank you so much. Is it clear? clear? Yes. Okay, Either. go ahead and more comments, Either questions. Okay, Hello. more questions Hello. or comments? Go ahead. Hi, Professor Yuha. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, uh, Abilash from Tampa, Florida. Yeah, I always enjoyed your lectures. Um, 
A question about the approach. Uh, you talked about supracerebellar infratentorial. Uh, when do you decide to go occipital, trying occipital or supratentorial? Like, is it the angle of the tentorium? Uh, is there a, a certain angle where you decide supracerebellar is a bad approach? Um, like, is there because you can go to that area both routes, but sometimes when do you decide not to go that route? You look at the imaging. So you see how much of the tumor is, you can reach by the intratentorial suprasebular approach. Of course, it's a question of experience. So I'm used to go this route and uh, I know the anatomy. I have done uh, uh, occipital approach mainly in calenic vein malformation, but they have disappeared to the endovascular. Yeah. I have done seven, seven cases of calenic vein malformation. So in these cases, you went between the occipital, occipital lobes. And then, of course, if the, for example, if the meningioma is growing very high, then you go there. But uh, this advantage is that you come above the veins. So the big benefit of this approach is that you come below the veins when you can change into angle, rotating the vision forwards, you, you will come rather high also in these cases. So I didn't, didn't use many times occipital approach. And when you, when you uh, suppose during surgery and you open, you find out um, your, your you, patient's head is not flexed the way you like, how do you correct that during surgery? Do you, do you angle the bed or do you? Yeah, we are the rotating the table. We are rotating, rotating the table. Okay. We then make salt forwards, salt forward. So okay. maybe you have not enough. The intentorum is high and your hands yes. are high. Then you rotate the table. Okay. Make salt forwards, we call it okay. salt forwards. So then you have the intentorum horizontal and then you have very good possibility. Hands, Thank you. And you can feel lean on the patient back. Like Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Okay. More questions, comments from the panel? Can I ask a question, please? Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Yuka. Uh, I'm Dr. Mehta from Syria. It was a wonderful okay. presentation. Uh, I have two questions. The first question is uh, Did you usually did your bone flap over the transverse sinus? Uh, in the bone flap, or you did not uh, proceed it? I made the bore hole above the transverse sign. So let's say roughly one third of the bone flap is about the transverse sign, and two thirds below that. And about the occipital uh, uh, hole for the uh, ventricular for the shunt, external shunt, how much uh, you use it in, uh, practically? Ventricular stomach? I have not yes. used it. No. You, you, you I have not used it. You do you not use it. My, my last question is we, we found always a very thick membrane on the veins uh, in this region. Do you prefer to dissect this or to leave it and work aw away from it? Uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, usually we find very thick membrane, uh, arachnoid membrane covering the the uh, uh, veins in this region on the midline. So do, do you uh, uh, advise us to dissect this membrane and these veins or leave it and work uh, lateral to it? Arachnoid is thick when you have a yes. tumor. Yes, no, it is thick. thick. Mm -hmm. I think the advantage of this uh, approach is that you are below the veins. Actually, you should not uh, touch them very much because <clears throat> they are big veins advantage of sitting position, they are not bleeding so heavily, but, and you can make uh, hemostasis with some compression, but uh, you should not make a lesion in the veins. This is one of the uh, serious complications. So I try to dissect the tumor, but the thick arachnoid membranes, they prevent somehow to see the tumor first. So I, I make a hole in the arachnoid membranes and come for the tumor surface, the bulk the tumor, take it piecemeal out. Thank you very much. Okay, more questions, comments from the panel? 
Sir, can I ask questions, sir? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. In case of a large pineal region tumor uh, having bilateral extension, which side do you prefer? Yeah, if it is very uh, totally symmetric, I like to go from the right side, but it's not not a big deal. Not a big deal. How, how from to take the that paramedial tumor? approach? You will come well. If, except if you have an earlier approach, then I don't want to go to the earlier approach because I make a new approach. Then I select the other side. That was one case that was operated in Italy. So I selected the other side, other side to go. But I, I don't think it is big big deal here. But of course, of course, if the tumor is very large, so you have to manage manage. So maybe you should go then both sides. But uh, I think through this approach, paramedia on one side, you can cover all the region, even the tumor is big if you debulk the tumor well. Okay. This okay. midline tumor, so you can go both sides. Okay. Thank you, you Mohammed, for the question. And more questions from the panelists? There's a couple in the chat box there. Yes, so, may I ask a question, please? Yes, okay, Matt, go ahead. Thank you. My name is Ahmed Tarek. Uh, it was a nice presentation, Professor. Um, uh, from the start uh, of every uh, operation, you usually start a paramedian skin incision. Um, what's the cause of this? Not a midline, not a direct midline incision. I thought I explained. I, yeah, of course, if you make a longer incision, you can you can go also, make also a paramedian flap. But the, the idea, the strategy in the paramedian flap is that you don't take the midline veins. You don't have to take the midline veins. You go a little bit aside, so about the cerebellum. And the paramedian is useful because the cerebellum is like that. So you don't have to retract the cerebellum so much. You go a little bit downhill on the cerebellum. So we'll, you don't have to retract the midline of the cerebellum and not to take the veins. This is the idea of the paramedian approach. And we can make a small flap and not to not be involved with the protuberantia or midline where the bone is thicker. So this is very simple craniotomy when you go paramedia. Thank you very much. So should we include uh, midline for the craniotomy? No. no, you should not include because the bone is thick there. And uh, you go just to the midline, paramedia, but you don't take the thick bone out because then you will have difficulties. You go paramedian one 15 millimeters, 20 millimeters paramedian and then you don't have the midline difficulties with bone and all the veins. So you just go above the cerebellum and if the cerebellum is like that, it is lower where you are going. It is lower, not midline is high, but paramedian is lower so you don't have more easy access. Just take care of the angle that you come to the final region because you have some angle, you are not going straight. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, you have, a, I have seen a very good uh, video of your uh, meningioma surgery. Uh, have you uh, done devascularization from initial part of the surgery or, or any tips or tricks dealing with from the devascularization? Meningioma? Yeah. Maybe we can speak next next Friday on many germans or uh, but the, the, the principle the principle of many German surgery is that you go to the to the feeders first. So you take the feeders like in uh, anterior fossa, you go front of basally and take the feeders first and then then you have the dry tumor to be debulked and taken out without big bleeding. So this is the principle. When I was, yeah, this is old stories, but uh, they were bleeding terrible, the meningiomas, when you don't do that. And it was all day or even night operation when I was asleep. It was like 
like nightmare in the night. Yes. So, <laughs> you so were totally, case, totally of, wet. Yes, sir. So now, in case of pineal region tumor, what you have shown in that situation, you have done. Case, case. Yes, sir. Ah, you go, you go around the tumor, you coagulate the surface, and the feelers are coming from the dentoria nodes. So, but the, I don't know so exactly, like in the front of basal tumors, you know exactly where the, the feelers are coming. So I went inside, debulked, and then uh, dissected and coagulated the surface. So in this way, the feelers were taken, but it was not very vascular, this tumor. And I did difficult with uh, heavy vascularization. Okay, Ahmed asked, how many of your cases got complicated by air embolism in this sitting position? I this, uh, you have always, you hear always with Doppler, to hear some air is going, but it's not dangerous. The dangerous thing is when PCO2 drops, and we had very effective good team, so we were compressing here. Anesthesia was immediately compressing here, and then you can feel the rain. So there were no serious complications with the sitting position. But, but the PCO2 is the most important thing. You have to follow that. If you follow other parameters, then you may fail. And uh, of course, I know that it has happened. Even deaths have happened because of the air embolism, but this is coming by unexperienced team. So it was not the case by me where I have been working, like in Kuopio and Helsinki, they were extremely good teams and very, very experienced in taking care of the patient and position and air embolism. But this is, this is one of the serious. So if, if the anesthetist is saying that, uh, like in South America, I was operating on, I was asking about the blood pressure in uh, Latin America. So the anesthetist is saying to me, take care of your own things. I take care of my things. This is, with this attitude, you cannot manage the situation. Here, very good cooperation between anesthetist and neurosurgeon is necessary to avoid se serious complications like uh, air embolism. So you cannot say that, take care of your own things. I will take care of mine. So good cooperation with the team. Yeah. It's, uh, okay. Ignacio asks, do you have any experience with epidermoid in this area? No. Uh, no, 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 I didn't have. But epidermoid are good tumors to take out because they have no vascularization. So they are good tumors, but they, they tend to recur. There is some in some corner you have some tumor left and it will recur for some reason rather quickly. But uh, of course, in a small country like Finland, where I was practicing, <coughs> you don't have so big numbers of. In the big countries, yeah. In Hello, sir. India, China, you can get most here. You are harnessing me for the second, sir. Hmm? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we didn't hear you. Okay. Well, well, you are. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time. I know you're a busy guy, and we look forward to your next week presentation. Next week, Friday, 5 p.m. Okay, very good. Okay. We'll see you. Yeah, that's great. Okay, thank you, Yuha. Yeah, we will do. Okay, okay we'll bye. talk. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, very good. Okay.